I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Yes?
You, in the chair. Don't get up. I swear on the gods, I will push you over if you do. You know you're getting up, aren't you? Money. I will pay you money to stay in the chair. And those people down there. I, I never liked them anyway. I'm happy they're dead. Please, just don't hurt me. Why is this happening? All I ever wanted was to learn a little magic, maybe smart a few enemies. So you're not one of the bandits? That means you're trespassing here now. Just like a bandit. <sighs> I'm too pretty to die. Witch. Have you ever seen a Dramora Lord? Well, uh, his name is Dravas, and he's a trained killer. Don't believe me? Th then feast your eyes on this! Ah, hello. See? I told you. That's a Dramora Lord. In the flesh. Leave, before I sick him on you. Really? So you aren't here to hurt me? But you're so scary. Then again, so is this Dramora. And he's completely useless. They call it the bird's eye. Some say it's because it touches the sky. Others say it's because it's infested with hags. But you saw it. Mother Agus is dead. All my sisters do. Which means I'll probably never become a matriarch. No! Of course not. I mean, you people kill the mothers, right? Then, <laughs> why would I want to be one? No way, not me! I'm just a regular old student from the College of Windhelm on her way back home. Well, in that case, maybe I do, but only because they're extremely powerful. It's not like I, you know, want to look like a vulture, <laughs> really. Really? You do that for me? But we just mad. Oh gods, I didn't just talk you out of it, did I? Because there really might be a way, even without Mother Aegis. It's incredibly risky, and you might have to get your hands dirty. I don't know. I've heard only Master Conjurus can do it. But there was this peddler named Sam, and he sold me a tome. He said it was a special book made for novices. I can't tell you how excited I was when it actually worked, but then I tried to command him. I should have known it was too good to be true. When I ask him to fight, all he does is wave his stupid tankard around. It's like he's not even here. It requires... ingredients. Well, not really ingredients, as in feathers and plants. I don't want to scare you, but... I need organs. And I need them fresh. Real fresh. As in ripped out from the body. Oh gods, no! I can't stomach all the blood. But there might be another way to remove the body parts without needles or sutures. 
You do realize we're talking about people, right? I mean, I need goat heads too, but we have plenty here already. Living organs are like soul gem fragments. They have lingering echoes of the soul. That's the difference between a beating heart and a still one, even if it's in a jar. You can even make a heart beat for hours outside the body, if the jar's filled with a special solution. Void salt, a torque bog thorax, and a drop of lemon juice is all you need. But I prefer we find bodies who live nearby. As I understand it, they're simply part of the sacrifice. Mother Egg is used to say, The old gods grow strong on the fat of live souls. It's nothing personal, it's just the way it is. But to answer your question, the gods do all the work. The sacrifices are just, well, a bribe. Oh, there's going to be taproot in the cauldron, and a lot of other ingredients. But that's not what I need to finish the brew. I need people. I know that sounds wicked, but there's no other choice. You understand, don't you? Great! I know just the family. They live in a small cottage west of here, across from Lost Echo Cave. There's something about them I don't like. Something off. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're nice people once you get to know them, but not nice enough that I'd feel guilty about harvesting their organs. I need the father's liver, the mother's toes, and the child's heart. If you do this for me, I'll pay you in gold. No, better than gold. I've got a special reward for you. You'll see. Welcome, Traveler. It's been a long time since we've had an adventurer come through these parts. Surely you'll want to come in and rest your weary feet. No, no. Don't thank me. My wife and I enjoyed the company. My little one even more so. Say... You've got a nice set of earlobes on you. Where I come from, those are good luck. And good luck is contagious. You must stay the night. Really, Papa? What about his toes? Are they big too? You said toes bring the best luck. I don't know, child. No one know until he takes off his shoes. But my money's on you, little giant. You and your mother were blessed with very large feet. Really? You mean it, Papa? Of course, my darling. Now go tell your mother we have a guest. Okay. And remind her to sprinkle salt on the floorboards by the entrance. The home has to be purified before a guest steps inside. In any case, judging by the smell, it looks like we're having stew. I hope you like charros. So you must be the visitor Rennie told me about. Let me get a good look at you. 
Oh, I like the shape of your nose. I had a dream about the Falmer one, and he had the exact same one. That Falmer in my dream was very old, but had good skin, which means you'll age just as well. But excuse my manners. My name's Bet. The little one's Rennie, and you've met my husband, Frodmar. My husband does like to exaggerate. Most adventurers can't tell the difference between charas and chickens. Last time it was dolphin pie, but if you look close, you'll see the flint of silver he keeps under his tongue. But for being a good sport, why don't you have a quick taste? Chickens or charas, I'm sure you'll like it. When you're done, go on and grab a seat at the head of the table. It's bad luck for the guest of honor to sit anywhere else. Is the meal ready yet, my love? The more I work, the hungrier I get, and it's been a long week. Did you place the elf's ear in the boot like I told you? I've been doing that, and chewing on them as well. Plus, I put one of those purple flowers under the cooking pot in the bed. Oh, love, purple? You didn't leave nightshade under the pot again, did you? I told you it goes under the pillow. <laughs> oh, silly me. How's that rhyme go again? When you're feeling blue, the color's true. When you're feeling high, use shades of night. What would I ever do without my Rennie? Do you have any children, Traveler? Well, you're still young. You have time yet. Some people are in such a rush, though. They try raising children that aren't their own. A disgusting practice, this whole notion of adoption. Oh, Fradmar, you're going to scare our guest. He knows what is and what isn't a sin. You're right. I apologize for making things so dour. My, that smells delicious! Oh, no, you don't. The guest eats first. But not before we have a little conversation to whet our appetites. So is it true what they say? Have the dragons returned? You must have had an eagle claw in your pocket, or a pig snout at the very least. You always need a little luck in times like these, which is why I keep both. Ah, southerners with their troubles. Dragon schmagons. It's what they get for living in such hot weather. <laughs> Mama, can I show the nice man my bug collection? After you finish your stew. Don't oh, let the girl have her fun. We can put the stew back in the pot for now. Let it warm up some more. Yay! It's really impressive. I keep it on the table over there next to Rengir's skull. He keeps an eye on it for me. Your brother always did enjoy playing with bugs, eating them too. Not anymore, Papa. Not after you took away his teeth. Ah, that's right. Poor Rainy was scared Rengir's skull would eat her collection, so I had the lower jaw removed. Children have such wild imaginations. In any case, we have the jaw in a drawer for safekeeping. Oh, 
Oh, it's simple. The poor boy didn't listen to his mother. I can't tell you how many times he'd stay out past curfew, or forgot to leave the rabbit's feet hanging by the railing. So one day, he came home too late, and it was his body hanging out by the railing instead. I don't mean to be so callous, but it's the truth. Of course, Frodmar wanted to have Rengir stuffed, but thankfully the wolves didn't leave much save the bone. Aye, that would have been in poor taste. You don't want to honor a child so foolhardy. Still, he was our boy, and hopefully the gods won't mind us keeping his skull as a memento. Here you go again, husband, making things awkward for our guests. Can we just enjoy this nice meal I've cooked for all of you? You're right, love. This is a joyous occasion. Our first year in, what is it, months? Yet, yeah, didn't stay for very long. I warned you about her. She had a mole on her cheek that was clearly a daedric mark of some kind. Not that you could spot it the way you've been lately. Have you been putting the sheep's blood in your eyes every morning like I told you? We killed the last sheep two seasons ago, as a sacrifice for the gods. Oh, right. What about this season? Did you remember to leave the sacrifices by the altar? Honey, I thought you were taking care of it. Damn! We can't! We can't! I knew it. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I mean, I was starting to doubt you just a little, but then I told myself, have faith, Misha, have faith, and it worked. I have the whole ritual prepared, right this way. Watch your step, <laughs> a little carried away with the blood, and you don't want to slip and fall from here. Wow, this woman had huge speed, and do you know what they say about women with huge speed? I don't either. Anyways, in you go. Okay, what comes next? Do I slaughter another goat? I suppose another goat wouldn't hurt. Can you do me a favor and grab a goat hide from the crate? Then toss it into the cauldron. Or was it a hawk beak first? Then a goat? I know the feathers are last, but what comes before that? 
Oh, damn it, Misha. Why can't you remember? By the crone, you did it! At least it sure seems like you did, the way that cauldron's bubbling. Well, it's kind of scary. But do you know what's even scarier? Not doing it. But yeah, just in case, let me give you your reward now. It's the spell tome that Peddler gave me. Travis doesn't fight, but he does draw attention. You know how it is. Pretty much everyone attacks the Dramora first. I'm glad you like it. You do like it, don't you? Oh god, should I have given you gold instead? Well, I'm sorry, but I guess it doesn't matter now. In about a minute, I'm going to be too powerful to care about anyone but myself. I call upon the crone of old to boil the venom of bubble toad. His swirls have got some liver chopped. Cook the first in this blackened pot. I of nude in flux of crone. Boil the broth with the second stoves. Belay of snake and magic's dark. Drain the life of this child's heart. Bound about the cauldron stirs, from mortal skin to withered bird. From these four lives it drinks the stew, from witch to hag be born anew. And it's all thanks to you. No more cowering in a corner with the cobwebs. Now I'm the spider. No better than that. A bird. One who soars over mortars like a god. But not yet. First, I must learn how to keep this body strong. So grab your boon and take your leave. I have goats to sacrifice. Hmm? How is that Dramora working out for you? Fine. Listen and learn. to sacrifice goats and children. 
Maybe you, if you keep bothering me.